Hey guys, and welcome to the video. And this another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This is a weekly segment that I do where I go over and cover and highlight some of the information regarding the hacking, modding, homebrew, jailbreak, and emulation scenes that I think viewers of this channel would either find helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining. There is a strong focus here on consoles and handhelds, but we do cover stuff regarding PCs and phones and other platforms as well from time to time. And pretty much everything I cover is strictly oriented towards the end user. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what's gone down over the past week or so. And we will kick things off this week with the PS3 scene and something that didn't happen over the past week but is about to happen within the next couple of days or so. I'm doing a tutorial for Artemis and this is kind of a little mini series. It's a two part series. On the surface, Artemis seems to be a pretty easy and straightforward homebrew to use with your modded PS3. It's a cheating tool, but anyone who's used this for any period of time knows that Artemis comes with lots of issues involving games freezing, not loading, your system crashing, and things like that. So I cover a bunch of stuff regarding all of that, not just how to properly use Artemis to try and limit the issues from happening or stop them from happening altogether. But we also talk about online cheating, the writing cheats once or constant options that are available and which one to use in what scenario, identifying bad cheats, and just a whole host of other stuff. It's so much that I had to break it up into two parts. Each one is 15 minutes or less. I already did part one. I'm going to be working on part two here soon. So make sure you catch that. Both parts will release on the same day within the next two or three days. At least that's the plan. And we continue with the PS3. We have an update to RetroArch. This is now on version 1.9. This is an official update for those of you who are on custom firmware on Kex. Make sure you get this one. And this is the recommended one, but just better overall performance. If you're on Hen, this is also the version you get. Just click on Kex right here. For those of you that are on CFW Dex, there's also a Dex version for you located right next to it. And next up, we have something new that seems to be very useful for those of you who use your PS3 to play PS1 games and PS2 games, and that is PSV Save Converter. What this new homebrew does is it actually converts PS1 game saves as well as PS2 game saves into PSV format, and then you can take those game saves and insert them straight into your PS3. So if you come across game saves somewhere online that belong to someone else from the various PS1 game saves that are out there, as well as PS2 game saves, well, guess what? You can take those saves and just put them into your system. Or if you yourself have some old game saves from your PS1, PS2 consoles, now you can convert them over so that they work in your PS3. You need a either Mac or PC in order to use this handy little program. The zip files are located right here down at the bottom, the one for Mac OS and then the one for Windows. By the way, we will be visiting this site a couple of times. As you guys already know, this is Logic Sunrise. It is in French, so you may need to use Google Translate to translate it over to your language so you can read on what's posted here. And now we head on over to the PS4 scene. The only thing we'll be covering this week is this Iconic Homebrew. So this Homebrew allows you to change your game icons and your profile icon or avatar very easily. This installs onto your PC. It has a nice clean intuitive interface and it connects to your PS3 right from here. You don't need to use like a separate FTP client or anything. You can see that once you're connected to your PS3, you can sort through the games that are installed in your system. You can look at the icons, download them. You can edit them. You can create icons from scratch or avatars from scratch, like for your profile and things like that. You can see that the interface again is very straightforward, simple, easy to use. You get the download right from here 
there is a mega file you download. There's instructions inside of the zip. This works for any PS4 that is like on 505, 672, whatever, because since this installs in your PC, it doesn't matter what version your PS4 is on as long as it's modded and it has FTP running. And now we head on over to the Vita. The only thing to report here is a ported version of Super Mario 64. This is not being emulated on the Vita. This has been ported over, meaning the game is running natively. Now, no doubt this has something to do with the many leaks that Nintendo has experienced this year already regarding a bunch of games and some of their legacy consoles, including the N64. Because of that, we've seen ports of this game pop up natively on various platforms such as PC, the 3DS, the Switch, and now even the Vita. When a game like this is ported over and it runs natively on the system, it should run much better than emulated. You can also mod it a lot easier and things like that. Now, for obvious reasons, PSX Plays can't post any links, neither can I, but they do go over some of the steps for building this on the Vita. Make sure if you plan on posting anything here, you read their warning because they are banning people for putting up links, for asking for links and things like that. So make sure you're careful. Still, it's very interesting to see these games starting to get ported over to all types of different platforms. And now we switch over to the Switch scene. A few things to cover here, starting with Edison SE. This one gets a little update. This, by the way, is a fork of the Edison cheat tool used with your modded Switch. Now this one is similar to the regular one, except it adds a few extra things. For example, this one focuses solely on extending the memory training capabilities. It supports bookmark, range search, unknown value search, and pointer chain search. You can check out some of the other added features here. There's also a very extended wiki page that has a ton of instructions on how to use this right here. So if you want to check it out, make sure you don't miss that link. This looks very promising and it looks great. My only negative that I can give it is that it just doesn't have an overlay menu like regular Edison does, and I wish it did. You can go over to the releases to get the latest NRO file and start using it. And next, we head on over to Retro Reloaded. This is a boot manager for your Switch. This works kind of in the same vein as Hecate. And by the way, if you need to check out the README file in English, when you initially come here, there'll be a link that says click for English. So click that and it'll bring you here to the English version. Anyway, as I said, it works similar to Hecate. Once you boot into this, then you can launch your various custom firmwares if you want. You can use Hecate from here dump your keys. I love the interface, the color, uh, the way everything is just set up and you can turn various things on and off, various homebrews on and off. The Tesla overlay menu feature is here and a host of other stuff. This is something I've been meaning to use. If you do decide to give it a try, make sure you read over all the instructions slowly and carefully because there is a like one time setup thing that you need to do with the RR Pro. And then there's even this, the Windows uh, Retro Reloader installer. So you can use that as well. Anyway, there's a lot that this offers and I've been wanting to try it out, maybe do a tutorial on it because I think it deserves a lot more attention than what it gets. And next we have Mission Control, and this is something that I was genuinely excited about because this allows you to connect controllers from other consoles natively to your modded Switch via Bluetooth. And that is the key because before we could do this, but you needed to connect them to your Switch via cable. You don't need to anymore. Now they work right through the Bluetooth function. You can see here the controllers that are listed, such as the Wiimote along with the extensions, the Classic Controller, Classic Controller Pro, SNES Mini, Wii U Pro, 
Pro controller, your PS4 DualShock 4 controller, even some of the Xbox One S controllers are supported here, but you need to make sure they are Bluetooth compatible. Some of the older variants of those Microsoft Xbox One S controllers use that Microsoft proprietary BS stuff, so those won't work, so you just need to double check to make sure. Anyway, there's some nice detailed instructions here, which is always a plus. I love it when the developers take the time to explain the stuff that they make and how to use it. It tells you what you need to do with the uh, release files and how to set up everything. It really works well. At least I tried it with my PS4 controller and it worked very well. I'm really happy. This opens up a lot more options when it comes to using controllers now on your modded Switch. And lastly for the Switch, we have an update to NX Shell, and this is something that I have been using since pretty much the day it came out. It's a file explorer, file manager for your modded Switch. It has all the features you would come to expect from your file manager, file explorer. It's no nonsense, straightforward, no BS, and I always, always use it. I just installed this latest version, which adds a bunch of fixes and enhancements and improvements improvements overall. So if you've used this in the past, make absolutely sure you get this latest update. For those of you who have never used it, it's very simple to install. It installs like any other homebrew Nero file. And now we focus on the 3DS, 2DS scene, where there's just one thing we're gonna cover, but it's something really good for those of you who have an older 3DS, 2DS system, and this is the release of old browser hacks. Now, in the last episode, or maybe the one before, I covered new browser hacks. Browser Hacks is a way for you to jailbreak your 3DS, 2DS systems without the need of like a special flash card or, you know, a magnet to put your system into sleep mode and all this other stuff that was involved before with jailbreaking your system. Jailbreaking these 3DS, 2DS systems is getting easier and easier. And this is a way that you do it right through the browser without any extra special hardware. The new Browser Hacks version only allowed you to do it on the new 3DS, 2DS systems, but now people on the old 3DS, 2DS systems can do it as well, thanks to this release. You can grab the zip file in the latest releases, follow the instructions here to be on your way to jailbreaking your system. It's pretty straightforward and fairly easy to do, especially compared to the other methods that we had to use before. Just again, make sure you take your time, read over everything, and if you decide to do it to your system, go ahead and give it a go and let us know how it turned out. So now we head on over to the world of emulation, and our first stop is here. This is Ludo, and this is made by Team Libertro, the same people who make RetroArch. You can think of Ludo kind of like RetroArch Lite. There's even a fact page here which tells you how it differs in some ways from RetroArch, but mainly there's a lot of features and options that are not here. It's more stripped down. You can't pick your cores or your emulators. They have a already been chosen for you and there's less of them. The ones that they picked are the ones that work the best. They also created this to have a nice balance between speed and accuracy when it comes to using your ROMs. Now, as you can see, the layout is again, pretty simple and minimalistic, but it's nice, it's clean, and it has that classic RetroArch look to it and feel, and you have all of the basic information that you need here. You can still do some things like create and load save states and things like that. If you want more information, make sure you come here, check it out. It's only available for three platforms right now, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And by the way, I need to come in on their logo because I absolutely love it. It's kind of like an old school controller with the D-pad for an eye. Then it has what would be like a select or start button or something like that in the form of a little smile. And then the uh, area where the buttons are has been made to look like an eye patch, you know, like a pirate, because let's face it, this is going to be used with emulators and everyone who uses emulators gets ROMs from somewhere online. So I think it's a brilliant little nod to all the pirateers out there and how this is going to be used. Good work, Team Libertro. 
And next, we have an update to CMU, the Wii U emulator for PC. This is hands down the absolute best Wii U emulator out there. Nothing really even comes remotely close. I've talked about it a billion times before. You can grab the latest download from the download page or here from the bottom at the home page. Go to the change log, click on the latest details so you can see what's been done here. What stands out the most in this one, graphic packs can now extend the amount of RAM available to games. So more RAM for games, that's always great when you're talking emulation. There's also kind of like a little showcase video here. I will link this as well so you can see it in action. And this is on version 1.21.0, which is this latest version. These games look great. And we will wrap up this week with one miscellaneous mention, and that is an update to DS4 Windows. Actually, a couple of updates that have happened over the past few days. This is a piece of software you install in your PC, and it allows you to seamlessly connect your DualShock 4 controller to your PC. You can use it as a mouse, you can use it for gaming or whatever. I've talked about this in the past. You can connect your DualShock controller either wired or use it wirelessly. Either way, these updates are quite large. I should say really the first one of the last two that came out is quite large and significant. Take a look at it here. This is the one that came out three days ago. Just a bunch of extra added features, enhancements, fixes, you know, the usual stuff of improvements and whatnot. And then a few more things here that were fixed or added in this version that came out a couple of days ago. So make sure you grab the file that's right for you if you want to hook up your PlayStation 4 controller to your PC. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.